Are you a people pleaser? Is it having a negative effect on you? If you're sick and tired of being a people pleaser and are ready to do something about it, then I encourage you to watch this video where I'm going to give you some tips that will help you to move on from your people pleasing ways. I'm Dr. Patricia Thompson, and if this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. On it, you're going to find a variety of videos that are designed to help you to be more successful as well as happier in the workplace. So please make sure to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I make new videos. You can find me at silverliningpsychology.com and on that website you'll find out services I offer as well as a variety of online courses that I have um, and there are a lot of blog articles that will help you to be more effective on the job as well. All right, so let's get into this topic of people pleasing. And I want to start by talking about a client that I worked with, and I'm changing this a little bit to maintain her confidentiality. But I'm going to call this client Amanda, and she hated to admit it, but she was the office people pleaser. She was the person who would volunteer to do the activities that no one else wanted to do. Um, she was the person who, when people would you know, not follow through on their commitments. She would say, oh, it's okay. And then she would cover for them or perhaps do their work to get it done. Um, she was the sort of person who, when her team, because she was a leader, wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, the same thing would happen. She would be, you know, overly accommodating and not be holding people accountable. Um, and so in the workplace, I will say that Amanda was someone who was well liked. She was seen as easygoing and really nice to be around, but she wasn't always respected. For example, if she made some sort of a request, people didn't necessarily take her request as seriously as other people's because they knew that she would be super understanding. And so they didn't always work with the same level of urgency or responsiveness, you know, in response to her as they did to others. Um, and, you know, she would often get the short end of the stick in terms of getting left with the things that nobody else wanted to do because she was so agreeable in doing it. Um, and so she also didn't get promotions that other people got. And I think part of that was because she wasn't seen as being as assertive in terms of holding her team accountable. And although she hated to admit it, um, even though on the surface she was doing all of this stuff and, you know, it looked like she was really easygoing and agreeable, she often felt resentful for the ways that she felt that other people were using her. And, you know, in our work together, she realized how she was playing a big role in setting the expectations for how others should see her. And she decided that she wanted to do something about it. So here are some questions that you can ask yourself if you know, Amanda's story is resonating with you. Signs you could be a people pleaser. So first, do you have a hard time saying no? Do you worry a lot about disappointing others? Do you bend over backwards for other people, often to your own detriment? Do you, you do some things out of a feeling of obligation and then feel resentful? Are you afraid that if you don't accommodate others, they'll think you're not nice? Or do you avoid advocating for yourself because you're afraid of conflict? Do you find yourself letting other people walk over you? Now, if you find yourself saying yes to too many of these, then chances are good that you might be doing a bit too much people pleasing. But luckily, there are some things that you can do about it. So let's get specifically into that. So my first tip is to be more compassionate to yourself. So often people who are people pleasers tend to be very compassionate and empathetic. They are constantly thinking about other people. They're anticipating others' needs. They're thinking about how other people are going to respond if they say or do certain things. And so they're very attuned to other people. However, at the same time, they're not always as compassionate to themselves. So, you know, for example, if you're bending over backwards for someone, and you know, doing something out of obligation or doing something that seems unreasonable, is that being compassionate to yourself? 
Probably not. And so a good question to ask yourself is, if it were not me in this situation and it were someone else in this situation, how would I think about it? So for example, if you had asked someone to do something and then for the third time in a row they didn't follow through and they expected you to pick up their slack, would you think that was reasonable if you were looking at that happening to someone else? And my guess is that likely you would think, no, that's not unreasonable, that's being disrespectful. And so when you have that little radar going off, you can recognize that, okay, I need to be more compassionate to myself than in this situation, recognize that my needs matter as much as theirs do, and take a different action. Instead of jumping in again when they're struggling or, you know, bending over backwards or staying late when they didn't manage their time appropriately, you can decide to take a different action. And this can relate also to my second tip, which is to recognize other people's resilience. And so if you are someone who's constantly jumping in for other people or saving them or being a people pleaser, a lot of times that can come from a belief that the other person isn't able to manage it on their own. And maybe you have to come in and save them. And guess what happens? Every time you come in and save the other person or do some sort of people pleasing behavior, then what you're doing is you're reinforcing their behavior. And so maybe you do have a coworker or someone on your team who needs to figure out how to manage their time more effectively. Well, if you're jumping in and saving them every time, they're not developing that skill. And, but if you believe that they have the capacity to develop that skill, then again, you can choose a different behavior. Or if there's someone who's always coming to you asking questions when they could easily research it themselves, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be helpful, but you know, if it's someone on your team, for instance, who really does need to develop the ability to go and research, believe in their ability to be able to do that. Know that you don't necessarily need to save them. And maybe in that instance, you could say, hey, I believe in your ability to be able to figure this out on your own. So I want you to go and do some research, bring back to me what you've come up with, and then we'll discuss it. That way you're still being helpful, but you're also giving that person the ability to be able to demonstrate their resilience and to develop in the areas where maybe you've been saving them in the past. And so then what sort of behavior do you need to do differently? Well, the third tip would be to set boundaries and learn to say no. So if you've been people pleasing for a while and then you just start saying no willy nilly to everything, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, and obviously in the workplace, if you're saying no to everyone's requests, then you're gonna have different problems. You're gonna come across as someone who's not collaborative. But what you can start doing is really thinking about your priorities and how the other person's requests feed into your priorities. So for instance, Let's say you're working on something. This is something a lot of people pleasers do. You might be in the midst of working on something. Uh, someone you know, reaches out and has a question or they send you an email and immediately you drop everything and you start interacting with that person to give them what they need. Um, and then at the end of the day, you find that you've had no time to get any of your work done because you've been basically dropping your priorities to deal with other people's priorities. So a really easy thing that you could do would be the example I gave earlier in, in terms of, you know, encouraging someone to kind of engage their own research. Um, but also you could simply say something like, you know what, I am in the middle of this thing right now. Could you come back at X time and pick a time that works for you? Or you could ask, is this a really urgent matter? If not, why don't we set some time on the calendar when we can really talk on it because I am working on you know this thing right now. Um, and so doing that still allows you to be responsive, but again, it's training people to have reasonable expectations in terms of how responsive you should be. I'm not telling you not to be responsive, but what I'm suggesting is that you need to think about your own priorities and your needs and how you can engage the other person and set boundaries that are appropriate. If you find that you're in a situation, for instance, where you're doing all the grunt work, then maybe you could say something like, hey, I noticed that I've done the last three times this was you know, uh, a requirement, 
maybe we could spread the wealth and you know have a rotation or something like that um, so those are kind of things you could think about just be intentional about setting boundaries um, and what you'll do is because other people are resilient you'll train them to engage you differently the next tip I have is to learn to deal with conflict so sometimes you'll set the boundary and people will be totally fine about it. They probably will typically be, especially if you've established um, a reputation as being someone who's pretty agreeable and pleasant. Um, but sometimes people might not necessarily like having a boundary set and they might push back a little bit. And very often people who are people pleasers will immediately like back off the minute there's any degree of conflict or pushback. And so what I would encourage you to do is first of all, recognize that you can tolerate conflict and you can tolerate differences. That's okay. Um, and then I would recommend developing some strategies to get better at dealing with conflict. And, you know, I wanted to keep these videos on my channel relatively short so that people, you know, will watch them. Um, but some examples I have for dealing with conflict would be doing things like there's a really good book called Crucial Conversations, which is kind of a classic for dealing with conflict. So that could be a place that you could start. Um, you could also take my emotional intelligence course, which can help you to deal with conflict. Um, and thirdly, just kind of engage in it. And I think when people hear the word conflict, they always think of something really negative, but really it's just a difference of opinion. And what you wanna do is try and consider the other person's needs and still be receptive but also consider your own needs and then see if the two of you can work together to create a solution that's going to be, you know, amenable to both parties. And realistically, that's probably going to happen most of the time. In those instances where it's not possible, then, you know, being comfortable with the fact that sometimes you have to make a tough choice is really important in the workplace, particularly when you're in a leadership position. Um, but, you know, ultimately my tip is just find ways to get better at tolerating and also dealing with conflict. My last tip is to practice receiving from other people. Very often people who are people pleasers are constantly in the giving role and they can have a hard time asking for help. And so what I would encourage you to do, if that's you, is to be intentional about asking others for help. It could be by doing things like delegating activities, it could be, you know, asking people close to you, like around the house, to help you more, just to, again, get you some practice in terms of receiving. Um, it could be asking for advice. It could be, you know, letting somebody hold the door for you if you're someone who's really having a hard time um, receiving. But the more that you can accept help from other people, the more you'll be creating a dynamic where behaviors are more um, you know, reciprocal as opposed to you always being the one doing the giving. And that'll help you to become less of a people pleaser and put yourself more on an even plane with the people around you. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that you found these tips to be helpful. If you did, please make sure to comment down below and like this video. Um, as always, you can find me at silverliningpsychology.com you can also follow me on social media. I'm probably the most active, I would say, on Instagram these days. Um, so you can follow me there at Psychology Silver Lining. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.